All right, the next lab, making hailstones. Those of you that uh, are doing it in person in your lab book, make sure you put your name here. <clears throat> this will be cut out and pasted in your lab book. If you're doing this virtually, make sure that you answer all the questions appropriately by the due date and time. The purpose, the problem, to create hailstones, hail crystals from supercooled water. Circle that word, supercooled. All right, got to understand what supercooled means and why it pertains to this particular lab. Hypothesis and background. When water is below zero degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point, when water is below zero degrees Celsius, but is still in the liquid state, and that should raise an eyebrow, how could it be below the freezing point, but still not frozen? Special, special circumstances. And we call that super cool. When water is below zero, but it's not ice, it's still water, it's super cool. It is possible to have liquid water below the freezing point because of a lack of condensation nuclei. Okay. Supercooled water will generally occur only at very high, what? High up in thunderstorms at very high altitudes. The type of clouds that will form violent thunderstorms where hailstones are found are known as what type of clouds? Cumulonimbus. Thunderheads. Cumulonimbus. All right, your materials. You need a beaker, large test tube, ice, salt, distilled water, and thermometer. This is actually one you can do at home. Safety as you're doing this. Be extremely careful with the blank test tubes. Need their glass. All right, don't want them to break. Also, do not stir the ice solution with the what? Thermometer, it is too thin and it will break. All right, let's look at the procedures here. We're going to fill the beaker two thirds of the way up with ice, add a small amount of water. We're gonna turn that beaker into not ice water, but watery ice. And you really do need almost entirely filled up with ice, all ice, all filled in and just a little bit of water. All right, take your test tube, fill it half full with distilled water. You're gonna place the test tube into the beaker. We're gonna let it cool off, all right? This tube will be in there and it will be cooling down. I'm gonna place the thermometer into our solution. <clears throat> and we're going to make sure that the temperature drops down to where we need it. Thermometer in the ice bath, do not place the thermometer in the test tube. Add a generous amount of salt directly into our solution here. And that will help to cool this down even more. Use the test tube or a stir stick or a spoon. Mix evenly, stir gently. Record the temperature every minute for at least six minutes. The temperature must be below negative five Celsius for at least five minutes in order for this to work. Once you've done that and you've recorded your data here, minute zero, minute one, minute two, minute three, four, five, six, and seven, Trial two, one, two, three, and then trial three. Once it's been below negative five for at least five minutes, you're gonna take a small piece of ice. You're gonna drop it into the test tube and observe the crystals that form. In order to do that, you'll need to pull the test tube out of the ice bath. All right, drop that seed crystal drop that piece of ice, which is going to serve as condensation nuclei into the test tube and watch what happens. All right. Sometimes a test tube will actually 
freeze before you do this and drop the seed crystal in. If this happens, just empty the test tube and start over. Remove all ice from the test tube and repeat the above steps a couple more times. Okay, so you ready? Let's go ahead and get started on this, set up our lab and do the experiment. Crystallized hailstones. So my ice here, have some extra ice here. My salt, which is going to help us reduce the temperature of this, lower that freezing point. Regular old tap water here. Got to create my <coughs> solution with the watery ice. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put in some salt large granular crystalline salt. We'll go ahead and put in some table salt just for the sake. That's a lot. And we'll go ahead and put in the first two test tubes here. Now this water is distilled water. All right. So what we're going to do is with our temperature reading, I've got two thermometers just to make sure that we're getting the right temperatures. And we put it in there and it was 20 degrees for our starting temperature. And we're going to start the clock right now my stopwatch and every minute we'll take a temperature reading and I'll go ahead and put these in there right now starting temperature one. I'm gonna get them, get them down in there really nice and snug and while we're waiting for that I'm gonna write down the temperature starting temperature room temperature was 20 degrees Celsius all right. I'll go ahead and pour some more of this just to have this ready. <clears throat> and put some in here. This is just in case these first couple don't work. All right, it's been almost one minute. Put that in there for safekeeping. All right, it's been one minute. I'm going to look at this, and this says negative four, and that one says negative five. So we'll split the difference and say negative 4.5. All right, next minute going on. All right, it's been seven minutes. We're still holding at negative six. Now we're gonna try these first two. <clears throat> Get our seed crystal. I'll hold this a little bit closer to the camera. And we're focused, and here we go. Not quite cold enough. Not quite cold enough. Didn't crystallize as quickly as we wanted. Okay. And here we go. Right here, and right here, and you can see the ice forming in there. 
quite as dramatic as I've gotten in the past, but frozen. Frozen solid. Less water, more ice. Less water, more ice. There we go. Put that there. Drop a seed crystal. Got him. Nice. Frozen solid. Excellent. Okay. Let's do the last one. Do that last one. Hi. There we go. Nice. Frozen solid. Hailstones. Nothing. Frozen solid. Okay, with the beakers and the test tubes, wrote down all my data. The first trial, thermometers started at room temperature, 20 Celsius, but very quickly got below freezing. And those first seven minutes didn't quite work as well with those first couple of test tubes until I added more salt, got rid of some of the water, and added more ice. And then these two trials, two and three, these are the same numbers. I just duplicated them here for those last two test tubes, starting already below freezing, getting down to negative seven, negative six, negative seven after the six or seven minute period, six or seven minute uh, time frame. Excellent. Now that you've created hailstones in the test tube, we can answer the questions here. First question explain how it is possible that water is liquid water is able to be below its own freezing point. Seems very counterintuitive. How could you have liquid water below the freezing point and yet it's still liquid? Hmm. Water is ice, really needs a seed crystal. or what we call condensation nuclei in order <clears throat> to freeze. High altitudes have better conditions to allow supercooled water. What you have to understand is that the supercooled water doesn't last for long. It will come in contact with the seed crystal very, very quickly. Okay. Describe what happened to the water when the ice pellet was dropped in the tube. Well, you saw it. The water was already below freezing. Water was already below freezing. So the instant a seed crystal was dropped in, what happened? All 
water froze. Very cool. All right, tying this into the real world, what causes hailstones, heavy blocks of solid ice, to stay aloft for several minutes, increasing in size instead of falling to the surface immediately? Well, inside thunderstorms, you have strong winds, and those small little seed crystals form high up here, and those strong winds simply churn and churn and churn in those seed crystals, small pieces of ice, medium pieces of ice, large pieces of ice keep gaining more and more and more volume as they bump into supercooled water. Right. So the updrafts keep water and hailstones aloft until they're so large that gravity wins. So what that means is that your larger hailstones, those that are baseball, softball, the largest of the large, that means that the winds inside the thunderstorm are incredibly strong upwards of 100 miles per hour in order to keep something that large up in the air, up in the atmosphere aloft for that long. Because remember, they don't start that large. A hailstone is going around and around and around, getting more layers and more layers and more layers and more layers and more layers, and more layers until finally it's so big that it falls. What size hailstone will begin to cause property damage? Start denting your car. Start cracking glass, either windshield or home. Start ruining your roof, your asphalt roof tiles. I'm generally, it's around golf ball size. Anything smaller than that, quarter size, a nickel size, um, corn kernel size, BB size, pea size, peanut size, those will be loud. Um, you don't want to be outside getting pelted by those, but the smaller ones won't start to cause property damage. All right. Golf ball size and bigger, certainly up to baseball and softball. Um, you will have significant property damage. All right. Matching up here on our diagram, match the following terms to the proper location on the diagram below. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Warm air and cool air, which is which? Remember, this is the cool air advancing, okay? The warm air is out here, out front. Things are moving this way. The warm air is G. Updrafts and downdrafts, that's inside the cumulonimbus clouds, formed by the warm air getting forced up because the cold front is pushing through. Anvil head, that's what we call the top of these large supercell thunderstorms. Lightning formed by dust, ice, water particles colliding and releasing electrons. Cold front, the front is this position right here. B, and then obviously the rain, C. All right. Well, that wraps this up. It's a relatively short, straightforward lab, but pretty awesome, pretty cool, nonetheless. Yes, I said cool on purpose. Play on words there. All right, for those of you in person, make sure that you are writing a conclusion. In this lab, we modeled and created hailstones. And go from there. Use your guide in the front of your lab book to make sure that you hit and discuss all aspect of the conclusion. If you're doing the virtual lab, make sure you answer all essay questions and all parts and submit it. Thanks for watching. Good luck.